sideways and I did it last time like this and it was fine, I think. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I have this desire to talk to you. Like <laughs> <laughs> because what happens if I go like this, then you see me vertically. Yeah. But you see me and I think they want a horizontal frame. So gotcha. Let's let's uh okay. hopefully this will work. How are you? Yeah, I'm pretty good. Uh I and I confess I didn't I haven't watched these so i haven't seen yours before so i know nothing about what's happening <laughs> in your life that's uh i think that's probably the best approach <laughs> where where but are you, you where are you in the world I, i'm in jordan uh in in amman jordan have you ever been this part no. of the world no never have been it's uh no it's a great Great country. It's a, you know, desert. It's Middle East, you yeah. know, so it's uh, starting to get really warm. But the birds are chirping. You know, there's some birds and, and you know, it's sort of this, the light's starting to go down a bit. You have a visitor uh, back there. Yeah. Oh, it's my wife. <laughs> Hi. Oh, really? Should I move? Okay, Alec, let me, let me yeah, no see if I can. Yeah, let's change locations if that's mm -hmm. all right. Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe I can do it here. Are we recording? We are. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, okay. I, they can edit this out. Well, I, I, I kind of love it, but yeah. <laughs> Wait, I forgot my notebook with the questions. Hold on, Alec, I'll be right back. <laughs> Hey, sorry. No problem. So this is uh so you know we have a we have a one year old. Oh my god. And and uh, and it's it's around bedtime right now, so we just put her down. And yeah, so it's like you know we could whisper. The, the, no, no, no. Now we're good. Now now we're good. Now we're good. Now we're good. Uh, but your your kids are older, right? You have two, right? I have two, yeah, 17 and uh, 13, almost 14. Oh, 17, I didn't realize, wow. I know. I know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, it came uh, quickly, yeah. Yeah, so actually, I mean, this is not one of my questions, but I, I do wonder, so 17, and that's sort of around the time that, that probably they want more independence, <laughs> and, and now they're locked in with dad and mom. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right? So how's that working out? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a nightmare. I mean, it's uh, <laughs> I mean, the whole thing about teenagers. You know, everyone talked about it, and they and especially teen girls. People said, you know, that's like a very hard time, and um, and I thought like, well, not my little angel. Um, yeah. But it's yeah. I mean, all of teenagerdom has been very challenging, and. Um, and then this just like doubles down on the problems. So yeah, it's wow, it's challenging. Wow. So yeah. I should I should uh, you know we should keep this conversation going as my <laughs> daughter, you just, know, because yeah, I, I see it as an angel. You know, I, I don't I cannot even imagine like she yeah, being, you know. I know. And the whole uh, dad. I mean, and and my daughter was like the daddy's girl and all that. So it's. <laughs> <laughs> is she is she is she into what you do like is she into your work is she into not sort really. of no 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 she's and and forever she's not been she's she has more of like a business mindset um oh, yeah, right now. yeah and which is great and so she's interested in like the larger sort of economics of the art world and photography and all that stuff potentially but not not so much doing it which is like totally great yeah not a problem yeah okay, okay. yeah and how is um so how's the lockdown situation over there i, I lost track so there's some states that basically <laughs> is back to normal and others i mean what's happening there uh, you know it's it's just a complete shit show um it's it's so chaotic because you know, Trump sort of left it to the states. Uh, yeah. To with, uh, and so every state is trying to navigate their own 
strategy, except that then there's this external force of like Trump saying, let's open everything up or, you know, whatever it is. Uh, so in Minnesota, where I live, uh, we were keeping our numbers really low. Um, like Minnesota is sort of a, and it's like, it has Scandinavian roots. And so we're like pretty good at following. Like, uh, right, right. Uh, but now the numbers are going up and, and simultaneous to that, we're sort of like slowly opening things up. So it's, it's not a good situation. Right. Right. But, so the numbers might, might yeah. spike yeah. up. Yeah. It might spike up. It's troubling, but I mean, you know, I'm super lucky to live in a house with a yard and all that kind of stuff. So it's not, so I'm not crowded in. And, yeah. Yeah. But you don't, are you, are you one of these prepper types? You don't strike me as one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so not a prepper. No, no I'm not. I'm not. And even when the, everything went down, I was like, I just, I mean, you probably have a much better sensibility than I do, but I'm like a class, you know, like this, everything's going to be fine. You know, cause in America it's like, Oh, everything will be fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, like we'll take care of it. And so suddenly to like, like Oh wow, we really are yeah. out of toilet paper. <laughs> what do we do? Uh, wow. Yeah. No, I think it's I think it's fascinating how out of touch we are with death and and also like there's despair, but we had, we're pretty good at like shoving it into the corner. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that kind of, you know, it's, it's a nice way to to go into my first question that I had, Alec. And and I wanted to talk a little bit about the future and ask you about your sense of, of you know. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, but obviously, you know, from, uh, so I was just reading, I don't know if you saw this article, of, maybe two, three days ago in the New York Times about how museums are starting to approach, uh, you know, they're starting to collect artifacts and, and works from people sort of uh, as a response to this period, you know. Okay. No, I didn't see uh, Did you read? Yeah. Uh, just sort of like, you know, they're starting to ask the question of, 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 you know, how is this period going to be remembered, you know, in, in the arts, you know, so, so, you know, you, you're, you're, you know, you're into that scene, into that world, like, you know, I don't know if you understand it or not, but you're certainly in it, you know, uh, so I was curious how you sort of see these being remembered photographically, you know, like, is there... I mean, is there, if you had a, like a, you know, crystal ball and, and you could go like 20 years from now, mm-hmm. is there an image that you have seen or a body of work or is there sort of a, 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 a visual approach that, that to you sort of stands oh. and transcends the, the sort of the daily sort of reacting to things? You know what I mean? It's, it's a kind of a vague and maybe not, too clear well, question, but uh, yeah, no, it, it's interesting. I'm, uh, I mean, like, I think, like most people, I've been reluctant to do a lot of future prediction because it's just so, it's just so unclear. Uh, but it's, but it's, and it's interesting to think about. And the the thing I most think about is how uh, technologically we're going to be changing from this. So that, you know, here you and I are talking, of course, we've always had this ability to talk to each other, but there's no doubt that the whole world of like digital communication is like going through some sort of transition. Um, And so I feel like kind of related to that, um, all of these sort of like Zoom performances and dances and events and DJ parties and all of that stuff, I think that will be the kind of marker or, or one big markers of this time, less so than the documents of the sort of photographic or video documents of, you know, people on ventilators and that kind of thing. I, I think yeah. more about this collective response, maybe in, in part because of the sort of difficulty of, 
visualizing what this is. Yeah. You know, did you see, did you see the, the new Vanity Fair cover that was shot via Zoom? Uh, no, no, who did, did it? it? I, I forget the name. I saw, uh, I saw that, uh, I saw Chris Anderson did something. Did he, did he, he, on, he on Zoom? Out, uh, yeah, for New York Magazine via Zoom. Uh, uh, okay, I didn't know Or he like, dire- he like directed someone. I guess so, yeah, yeah. So the, the, new, the new Vanity Fair cover, it's a celebrity that I don't know their name either, okay. but uh, it's sort of the same idea of the uh-huh. photographer directing. So I guess that's the way it, sort of things are going or, or like how I mean yeah how, how do you see connecting to your to your to your sort of subjects you know like going yeah. forward right or like the idea the idea of the road trip you know something that you're exactly. so yeah. kind of you know uh known for yeah I mean w- what's funny is that I I feel like my work is all about distance. So I think in a like a pre-pandemic era, yeah. the idea of like directing someone from behind a screen, like I could imagine doing that. <laughs> but somehow yeah. like doing it in this era doesn't it feels more like a gimmick or something to me. Not not that I'm against anyone doing it, but I have a harder time. I am just I am totally lost in terms of that stuff and what it means for my own work i just don't i don't have a good answer i mean it's i don't know about you uh i i like i did an assignment a couple weeks ago in a different in a different city and that like felt so good (laughs) just to be a photographer again to be out in the world engaging is yeah hugely problematic with the masks and fewer people out and all that kind of stuff but uh um I mean, I just sort of envision. Were you photographing people, Alec? Yeah, I was photographing people. Yeah. Uh-huh. And did any of these sort of, I mean, did it sort of have an impact in your approach at all, or you were just business as usual, but just with a mask and maybe more, you know, not as close? I mean, or did did that sort of play part in? It. it well, it wasn't. I mean, the, the idea of the assignment was uh, I was photographing this this neighborhood in Chicago where the average life expectancy is 90 and another yeah. neighborhood where the average is 60, right? So it's very rich neighborhood, a very poor neighborhood. Mm. And, and to me, like the, that contrast is always a problem because the rich people are always behind walls and always impossible to access. And so it was that times 10 <laughs> because you literally like could not access their buildings. And, and yeah. then the poor people were still out and about, but wearing masks. And then I had to confront the issue of the mask. Um, so it was, it was kind of the same old battle, but just on steroids, I guess. Um, <laughs> and I don't know. I mean, I, I, you know, the, the mask problem to me reminds me of the beginning of the cell phone problem. Like suddenly everyone had a freaking cell phone in a picture. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's a good way to, yeah. to think about it, yeah. Uh, but no, but I did on that trip, I thought, well, this really is a problem for me doing my work, the kind of road trip work, which is really just wandering, not having such an agenda, following one thing to the next. It's just so hard to have that kind of serendipity in a lockdown situation so yeah so i'm not even trying yeah 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 no it's hard i mean it's it yeah i mean how do you go about i mean when you say you're not even trying you're trying to sort of reinvent the road trip is that what you mean or yeah or? yeah anything like that right i mean basically yeah. what i'm doing is i've done little goofy experiments that aren't terrifically meaningful but they're like little sketches and that's the kind of thing I would do anyway in a sort of down yeah. I'm doing that and then I'm doing writing that's my that's been my creative outlet what what are you writing well um, fundamentally I've been uh in this letter this letter exchange this correspondence with this guy in prison and that was 
that was my last question, but oh, let's, go, last for question. Let, okay, let's yeah. go for it. Let's go for it. No, no, no. Let's go for it. Let's yeah, go for it uh, I, I'm so curious. I, I heard about this actually. Okay, yeah. Uh, but, yeah. But I just heard a little bit, and I wanted to ask you, like, to expand on it, and like, what was the motivation, and what, what's what's this about? Well, he just he wrote me totally out of the blue last year, and uh, and he's so he's a prisoner in Minnesota where I live, and, and yeah. Um, I mean the 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 longer story of it is that he was in a he was in the kind of the big prison here, and they had a lot of resources. They had a library, they had arts and mm-hmm. lives, they had an art program, and all that. Then he got transferred to this really crappy prison where he just gets a little cubicle he doesn't have art materials he's not allowed did, did he get into trouble and that's why he, he got transferred he got into trouble but and it's a really long story yeah uh, but yeah that's why he was transferred uh and thus he's like super hungry for creative engagement and creative dialogue so he just kind of i sent letters out to local artists and writers and people i'm not i'm not sure who well he contacted and he contacted me and it was and i was slow to respond um but around the end of last year i replied and and we we started this dialogue um which then you know once lockdown happened it like took on all this added meaning totally because <laughs> here's yeah. the, i mean since 2003 he's been in prison and dealing with all of these constraints so that that's been super interesting. And it's been an opportunity yeah. to talk with him about photography itself, because one of the things he said when he first contacted me is that, cause he's not a photographer, he's a writer and, he, and painter, but he uses photographs so much, he said, as his source material. Um, mm-hmm. And just kind of thinking how photographs exist for him, uh, super interesting, yeah. And what, so what did he say about that, actually? I'm, I'm curious. Like, how, in what form did they exist for him, they, given well, his, his situation? Yeah. Uh, so I told him about this event that I did a couple of years ago um, in the UK. And have you ever heard of Desert Island Discs? Have you ever heard no. of this? Okay. So, like, no. everyone in the UK knows this term. I'd never heard of it. But it, it's a radio show that's gone on for like 70 years or something yeah. on BBC. And they invite people to, uh, to come in and talk about the eight recordings they would bring to a desert island, okay? So then someone did this with photography and this kind of live event. So what are the eight photographs that you would bring to a desert island? And so I did this and I talked about what they would be. And of course, in real life, they would be eight photographs of my family or whatever, but um, uh-huh. that's not very interesting to talk about. So I, whatever, I made a list and, and I told this guy Fausto, I told him that story and he, and I said, well, what, what would be the eight photographs that you would have? Um, and he's, he listed them and they were so, in, they weren't real photographs, but they were like photographs in his imagination and so vivid and so detailed um, and, and really just the, like, I think that his imagination is much more vast because of his incarceration. Um, yeah. So that was quite interesting. Um, and then I did something else with them where I said, like I sent him some pictures, not my own pictures, just some pictures for him to reflect on and like what sort? What sort? Just like, like random snapshots, really, just that I found. Um, and he, at first, he had a really hard co- time connecting with them because he wants to connect his own life, essentially, in his own ex- experience. And so, for example, I asked him, like, is there a place you want to travel when you get out? And, and he said, like, I don't even let my brain go there. Like, I don't think about travel like so his imagined photographs would often be like his his aunt's farm uh that he experienced as a child but he would like a memory from from a memory of it yeah right but but then he would actually like fill it in he said like in the foreground would be my aunt 
and in the background would be such and such building. Like he he like visually structured the picture in his brain. Um, yeah. And I just think, because I don't know about for you, but for me, photographs, uh, like I'm looking at them all the time, but mostly they exist in my imagination. It's like some photograph I saw by, you know, who would like just generically, we could say some Robert Frank picture that I saw. Mm -hmm. It's not like I open up that book, you know, every week and revisit that photograph. It just exists as this like springboard to imagine things. And, and that, that's kind of how they're important for me. Like the news photograph can have impact, boom, like at that moment. Um, but I'm more interested in that residual effect of, mm. of the memory and the, like I, I was just watching a movie in which they referenced the Abu Ghraib pictures, you know? And yeah. The way that those are just, they are a memory now, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and they become part of of you know culture and history, and yeah. and you know they really become ingrained. Yeah, um, you know, there's so you do a lot of interviews, and and you're very very generous, Alec, with with your you know time and 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 the way that you work, and you know, and I mean, I should plug in the Magnum uh, online course too, because I mean, oh, yeah, it's yeah. it's such a <laughs> Uh -huh. An amazing window into really just like how you go about, you know, doing your craft. So it's an amazing, you know, so I was thinking, what, what can I ask you about the way you do that? You didn't already sort of oh, yeah, talk yeah. about it on, you know, but, um, but I did read, uh, 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 there was this really great interview that really resonated where you speak about how you deal with failures and, mm. and, and, um, and how do you get over them, et cetera. And there was this passage that sort of stuck with me that I didn't quite understand. And I want to ask you more about it for you to, to, you know, expand a little bit. And it was the part where you say that there's this sort of battle between, you know, who we think we want to be and who we really are. Do you remember saying something like that? No, but it's <laughs> <laughs> sounds like me. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, so, I mean, it was, obviously in the context of, I guess, being a photographer and, 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 you know, but, but I, you know, I, I was hoping that you would talk a little bit more about this battle and, and what that means for you in particular, you know, is it, in a, and I also, you know, I've, I've read and you spoke about how you sort of compartmentalize your, your, mm -hmm. you know, your work and your life. And, and so this sort of balancing act between all of these forces, you know, but, uh, but in particular, this, 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 like, who do you think you want to be? And, and, <laughs> and, 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 right. and, and at this stage in, in, you know, in our lives, in our careers, you know, and, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, is that still a battle for you, you know, and, and how does that look like? Sure. Yeah, sure. Um, well, I'll talk about the thing that's kind of on my mind at the moment, which is related. You know, I sent out that thing just amongst our little Magnum. Group, yeah. Magnum yeah. Group. Yeah. That, uh, and because, you know, so <laughs> I think it's funny because that Paolo published that piece and, and it was, you know, gorgeous piece on his kids. And, and my mom texts me like, <laughs> and it's like, wow, this reminds me of you. And like, are you? I hope you're photographing your and, and then I say no. And she's like, you know, basically like, well, you, you, you're going to regret it, you know. <laughs> it's, just, it's, it's like jabbing the knife in. And, um, and it, it is, that's a really sore spot because, I mean, first of all, now, like as we started, my daughter's 17. And so like, I have not documented her life and I missed, you know, I have cell phone pictures or whatever, but I, I, I didn't do that. I missed that. There's no redoing it. Uh, and a, a while back, um, someone said I should photograph my son every month, starting from 
when he's 12 years old because the change is so vast and yeah and that's happened now and i didn't do that um and i miss those opportunities and it's it's crazy because uh because i do fa- value that kind of photography so much i love personal photography um almost more than anything and and so the fact that i haven't done it is really grating but at the same time i have tried in the past and mm. it never feels right it's just does it's just not me in the same way that i've tried doing like real reportage and i feel fake doing that too um mm. so it's that battle but but i would really love to be yeah uh like a family photographer a you know, and the, like Larry Sultan is a god to me. Right. But I mean, that doesn't mean that you're a bad father. No, I mean, it, it's, you know, because I mean, it sounds like for you, it's very important to to separate, you know, that family time that, you know, there's this sort of, and I also, you know, I've, I've read that uh, and you've spoken about how for you taking on a project is something that takes, you know, it's a big calculation that, you know, you really go in, it's a multi-year thing. And that, you know, it's, it's that it's, yeah. you know, you really think about pictures in, in a project rather than like right. snapshots that maybe you will put together later, you know? So there's a, a calculation, there's a method and, and. But, but just, but I'm not proud of that. Like, that's just the way I work. Like I really respect photographers that are fluidly photograph their whole life and it's all one big work. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm not like that either. Alec. I like, I can't, yeah. Yeah. you know, no, not at all. Uh, I mean, I have been forcing, uh, well, forcing maybe it's not the right word, but, uh, but trying to, to be more engaged in terms of taking pictures of, of my daughter and of my family, mm-hmm. not necessarily because of this period, but in general, Yeah, but it doesn't, it doesn't sort of, come out of I need to remind myself you know and 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 for me it, it really I mean to a lesser degree maybe it's uh I need to sort of it's like going to work you know mm-hmm. I need to put a suit on <laughs> or the the equivalent you know and and I need to like yeah. you know kind of go to work you know and right, right. And, it, and and yeah I'm not the kind of guy that carries a camera everywhere mm-hmm. and and finds amazing pictures on every corner mm-hmm. uh, you know, so, so I relate in that sense. I do think, I mean, the subject of failure to me is so, that it's like one of my favorite things to reflect on. And, and I think this pandemic period has, has been interesting for me because I have had these, you know, like very small potatoes failures. Like they're pretty inconsequential, but I, I tried photographing with binoculars. I tried making these sculptures and photographing them. And it's like, uh, but allowing myself to do those little things and and even put them out there, but have it not really. Yeah. I think that's good. Um, but how do you know already they're failures? I mean, how do you make that decision? And, and, and can that maybe in like 10 years, suddenly you find a box with, yeah. those negatives and and you know what i mean yeah i think and i think failure is a strong word but it's just like uh to, that it's not that it's so much for me and not for other there would be no reason for anyone else to look at it i guess um maybe that's it yeah I uh i don't know i mean what's your What's your relationship with failure? If I can turn the tables. I mean, do you, yeah. It sucks. <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's, you know. I mean, photography I, uh, itself is so full of failure, right? So it's like, yeah, you're yeah. always missing the picture, but I, do you feel like larger, you know, like, larger projects fail occasionally yeah i mean i don't know it's i don't know i mean sometimes it's it's 
it's a weird, and I don't know I'm, I'm, I, if you've ever been in this sort of situation, but, uh, but you know, when, when you feel it's a failure, but other people don't see it as such a failure the way you see it, and it's like, okay, you know, and, and, and you know, some people even like it, you know, mm-hmm. but uh, I mean, what I struggle with is, is, is sort of, uh, you know, sort of finding new ways to, to, to do my work that don't feel repetitive, you know, and, and I think in, in, in the sort of, you know, the work that I do, which, which a lot of times it's, it's based on, 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 you know, reacting to news events or, or, you know, these news events after a while, they have this cyclical kind of right. nature, you know, even in different countries that they, they just start looking the same. And, and, yes, right. and that's something that I struggle with, you know, and, 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 and yeah, and I don't know if, uh, like I'm in the middle of a, of a, of, of, of a project now, uh, that, that has to do with, with, uh, you know, refugees and, and the impact of, of, of Corona in, in, in the lives of refugees here in Jordan. Right. So, so I'm, you know, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm working hard. I'm trying very hard, but I'm, I'm don't know if I'm succeeding at, at saying anything particularly sort of inspiring or or deep about their situation other than pictures of refugees that perhaps I've done many times before you know what I mean Mm -hmm. and so that I see as a failure you know and 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 that to me is the part that sort of keeps me up sometimes like how to you know how to sort of see differently or 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 simpler you know or have a simpler approach or or you know and and that to me is is the part that mm-hmm. that I guess you know uh, I struggle with. But uh, does that happen to you, by the way? Like, do you have like bodies of work or or a particular sort of project that you've done that that you hate it or you don't like it, and people have like gone mad over it? Like, you know what I mean? Or or like that you don't feel. Uh... I usually, the, I usually hold things back really as as much as I can so that they, <laughs> so that that doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. Not as much that people respond to. No, I mean I, uh, I did this. I, I I worked on a project for myself a number of years ago, and I, and I started showing it to people, and I could just tell. You know, you can just sometimes feel like the energy that they're not responding. They'll say like, oh, that's really great. <laughs> you know, but you can just, <laughs> you can just tell. Uh, yeah. And, and so then I like, I, I kind of pulled it back. And, and then there was one person that was kind of more excited about it and, and started doing things with it. But it always made me uncomfortable um, that it just, yeah, that it just wasn't there. I mean, one thing I think that's interesting in my experience in Magnum is kind of, this is especially true when you're like starting out at Magnum and you're at a meeting and people are looking at books at the back of the room, you know, like the, the, <laughs> the real photographers are, are like, yeah. <laughs> they are talking and we're in back looking at books. And, but we're, you know, you have to be quiet. So, so like someone will be like flipping through the pages of my book and, and as they're turning a page, I'll just be like, oh, like, why did I put that picture in there? That's such a terrible picture. Um, and you don't even need a, another person to say anything. You just know, like, oh, that's like, that's a failed picture. Or Yeah. Uh, and so that, I've had that many times where it's just like, it just feels wrong. It's out there and it feels wrong. It's yeah. like an inner sort of voice that... that- yeah. Yeah, but you need other, somehow you need other people's eyes sometimes to like, to internalize it. And do you, uh, do you sort of go to the same types of people when you, you sort of want to show your work at that stage or it changes or? It, uh, it's, it, it's changes. I keep it really small because I'm, I'm quite sensitive to people's feedback. So I want to be careful about it and. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know, but I did. I read somewhere 
about a, I think it was just about a writer just imagining like one of his favorite writers reading a story. Like going, like if I could imagine, a, you know, being at the AGM and having another photographer flip through my book, that like that's probably a good process to sort of put mm. myself in that place and not even really doing it. And just, that's in some ways that's all I need is just the perceived presence of someone I respect. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, in that, sense i mean you've you know with this online course i mean you've you've put yourself out there you know for people to really sort of yeah. you know see I, and, and that was that was terrifying by the way so i mean i i mean i cannot even imagine i mean but you're a natural man like you you're like so kind of mellow on camera and like you know, <laughs> oh my god oh my goodness. that's so not true. no no but it can't i mean what's crazy about it is that it came together really quickly like they had the idea let's do this thing and and which seemed disorganized and, and I was just quite concerned that it was going to be a disaster. Not, not only from my own side, but just because of lack of planning. But I have to say it's been like the most satisfying thing because it's, um, because people, like the response has been really good and people feel like they got, got their money's worth. It's just so, yeah. Nice. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's sort of unlike anything else I've done in that way. Um, and that, like, that's an example. That was a real roll of the dice, and that could have been a big failure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that I deeply yeah. regret it. But sometimes it, it is good to roll the dice. Sometimes, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it takes it takes guts. Yeah, it takes sort of, you know, you're putting yourself out there yeah. in a way that that you know. I don't know if I would have that. You know. Uh, sort of openness to just lay it all, you know, I would love, uh, I out would there, love to you see, know? Yeah. I mean, I would so love to see the way you work and some other people work. It'd be just fascinating. And look yeah. at it. It's like getting dark out there. We're like watching the sunset. I, I know. I hope. Yeah. It's uh, I wish there was a way that you could see more of the view. It's actually, maybe I can raise the camera a bit because it's oh kind God. of like a nice view of, Oh, come on. I don't know. If oh, my God. Yes. 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 And it's, it's a really nice night, too. It's, um, so, Alec, just one more question. Uh, how are we doing on time, by the way? Oh, I don't we, know. We... I don't even know what time we started. <laughs> okay. So, I'm just going to ask you one more question. And, and um, so, it was just in a general sort of term. I mean, what's the last thing that you've learned, you know, in terms of maybe... I mean, I guess in, in, in the context of photography or, or in the context of, of your work, you know, uh, is there, like, can you think of, of the last, you know, it can be big or small or, or you know. Hmm. Uh, okay. That, does okay. that make sense, this yeah, question? Yeah, yeah. Like, well, let me, yeah, I know, I know, what you're, I know what you're getting at. Uh, so I've been working on this, this new metaphor. <laughs> let, okay. Let me, let me throw this out for you. And it's related to, <laughs> it's related to the shooting that I did in Chicago and, and, and something else. But, um, and this relates to lockdown and all of this. So I've been thinking about, uh, sorry, this is like, this is not a good straightforward answer. <laughs> I just want to, <laughs> I want to talk through this idea that I have, and it's really okay. But um, so I was making an analogy in my brain to to being a photographer is like being a chef, right? Okay, and like a chef at a restaurant, and and so now during lockdown, it's like all these chefs who lost, you know, who can't cook, who can't get their work out, and then suddenly they you know, like you'll have a fancy restaurant that's doing carry out service, right? Mm -hmm. Bear with me here. So I felt like when I did that job in Chicago, I felt like this, and it's really pretentious to say this, but I felt like a chef 
but I was doing kind of like carry out service. The food wasn't hot. It was kind of like mashed together, not perfectly and all of that. Mm -hmm. um, but then I did this other assignment here in Minnesota and it was, it was really a minor. I was just like one little dumb picture. Um, but it was for a very important story and a really good story with good writing and all that. And I thought, oh, it's like I'm a sous chef. Like I'm just like over here, like preparing some little vegetables. And, but it's, it's going to be a good meal. And I thought that like, one of the thoughts that I had is that, one of the things that I'm learning is that it's great to be the chef <laughs> and to get this sort of like ego fulfillment of that. But I think it's also good to step back and play these other roles at times and allow and allow for that. Um, mm. And so that you, you know, so that you're just part of a good meal. <laughs> but you're yeah. the one responsible for it. That's my that thought. makes a lot of sense. And it's about dinner time and I love food. <laughs> <laughs> dinner time. Uh, yeah. I can't see. I can't see no, that, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, that makes a lot of sense, Alec. And uh, yeah, I, I, I agree. It's, it's good to, you know, to do the, the, to be a sous chef sometimes. Absolutely. Yeah, work in the uh, service of something else. So like to do, to do job. I mean, that's one of the things about doing jobs that can be satisfying at times that you're just in service uh, of yeah. something bigger than yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And it kind of, you know, for me, I find that, uh, you know, sometimes it kind of forces me to, to engage when otherwise I would not feel like it, you know, or I'm like, and then sometimes beautiful things happen, you know, and you meet somebody or you, yeah. you know, the story that then you want to follow up on and, and no, absolutely. Right. Yeah. Um, okay. Cool, man. Well, Hey, this is great. Um, and thank you so much. Thank you so much. It was really, yeah. And uh, yeah, say hi. Great, to great to connect. Okay. Same to you, Alec. Take All care, man. Right. Have a good night. Bye. Bye. See you. Bye. Hello again. Thanks to Alec and Moises to record the previous conversation. Um, this is the photographer who will ask the question for the next one. Susan Maceas, and this photographer will answer. Richard Calvar. Good luck, see you, thank you.